Hey, Joe here. Just uh, really glad this isn't uh, smell vision I just got done working out, came down to the studio to f do some quick tweaks for a client and um, not smelling great, so be thankful. Um, not much to look at either, but I had to show you this. So I'm working on a mix for a client. This is kind of mix three or, yeah, second round of revisions, final subtle tweaks to things. And it's a really cool song and I really love it. And um, they're really happy with the work that I'm doing, which is always nice. And there was one, the one final in my email, the final thing they wanted me to do was on the main acoustic guitar. There was this problem. I didn't even hear it. But as you know, if it's your music, you tend to listen with much more discerning ears than even the person mixing it sometimes. And they said, yeah, we're listening, especially on like earbuds and things like that. We can hear the very tail end of the song. We can hear the click track that bleeding into the, the main acoustic guitar. So that's the guy was playing acoustic guitar or girl headphones. The sound of the click bled out of the headphones into the microphone. It's something we all deal with, and it's annoying. And it's one of those things you certainly want to get right on the recording end, but sometimes you get everything else right, and the acoustic sounds amazing, and you just not quite. It just you don't you don't notice it, or you don't find out till later, or sometimes it's unavoidable. There's lots of reasons why. But here is a solution that I don't know if I've shown this before. I think I have, but I can't remember, so I'm going to show it again because you might have forgotten because I forgot that I even showed you. And it's this. First of all, let me play it for you. So here's the very end of the song, really sweet. I actually used this song in a video last week, so you may have heard a couple of tracks, but really cool, kind of acoustic-y, vibey sort of track. This is the very end of the song. Did you hear that right at the end? It's pretty subtle. You'll have to turn things up. I'm going to crank it up on this end. But um, listen again. I'll play the final chord and listen closely. I'll just solo the acoustic. So you can hear that t -t 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 -t, which um, I honestly didn't hear on the fade out, but once he pointed it out, I can kind of hear it and I could see how if you had earbuds, that stuff tends to come out more for some reason. So he was saying how, you know, he had tried to, f you know, he should have fixed it in recording. He's kind of beating himself up about that, which I totally understand. Um, and he said he tried to use like RX, the the kind of audio um, restoration plugin to fix it. And that didn't really help. And um, so he's kind of saying, well, it is what it is. But here's the solution. And if you want, you can steal this and blow your client's mind next time they have this problem. So. The thing is, what, what do you notice about the click sound? It's a very high frequency, right? And what do you also notice? There's plenty of like kind of room noise there too. So we can kill two birds with one stone. The fade out of the song, it typically needs to be just this big warm thing. Well, guess what? For a warm, you don't need high frequencies. Once the initial strum has happened, the bring, the rest of the resonance of the strings is predominantly in the lower frequencies, right? Just the wow instead of those higher frequencies. Those tend to die off first anyway. So we're just going to help it die off a little bit. So I'm going to show you, just I'm going to play it for you and then show you what I did. Here is the difference. I automated something and listen to how much better that acoustic sounds now. Well, it might sound a little weird, but the click goes away. So we listen through the entire fade out, don't hear a click at all. What do we hear? Well, the high frequencies went away. Now, if this was a solo guitar vocal song, this wouldn't work, right? That's too obvious. But in a mix where there's lots of other things happening, and really it was only about right here, a few seconds after the final strum had happened, where you really were hearing those audible clicks come through. And so by in that meantime area, as you can see by this automation curve here, I made it curve down, so I automated there was an EQ plugin on this acoustic guitar anyway. And all I did was, wait, that's the wrong track. Here it is. The, all I did was turn on the high pass filter or the high cut filter and set it to 20K, so it's not doing anything really, and then had it automate down to like one kilohertz. So it's taking away all the highs and the high mids, but it's doing it somewhat slowly over the course of about three seconds. So you can watch it at work here. I'll solo the guitar, and you can hear that again. So 
So we still get a good four or five seconds of extra sustain out of the guitar. We don't have to do an abrupt fade on it because that sounds, you ever done that? You, you, you hear that noise in the guitar, so you fade it out quickly, and that sounds awkward, and you have to cover it up some other way. This is a way to extend the, the uh, sustain of that final chord without extending all the noise in the upper frequencies. Um, and now listen to how it sounds in the mix. Here we go. When you combine rolling off those highs with that big lush reverb that's happening and the big upright bass that's bowing a note, you don't even, unless you're listening for it, you don't hear that acoustic suddenly lose all its highs, but it still maintains a little bit of its sustain and you don't hear anything end abruptly. There you go. Use it. It's a great trick to steal. Hope we, and if you do use it, come find this video and leave a comment. Let me know that you used it and how blown away your client was. All right, I got to go. I need a shower. It's just the truth. If you can't handle the truth, why are you watching me? Okay.